Chile in the Estadio Olimpico Atafalpa. Now a back peddling. Valencia's cross. It'll run here for Antonio Valencia. Great chance. Ecuador will take the lead. One Valencia sets it up for the other. So looking for Antonio Valencia who will get to it first. Miscued holding by Martinez. It's in though by Ramirez and it's 2-0 Ecuador. What scenes in the Estadio Olimpico is getting better and better for Ecuador. Ecuador with another opportunity and they could be in a gain here. They're wide open in the back and Antonio Valencia again has failed to uh, kill it with his first touch. Antonio Valencia, Casado tucks it in. The flex stays down and it's green in Ecuador. Felipe Casado with his 20th international goal. And uh, this is a miserable evening for Juan Antonio PC in Chile because they just have turned up and at this rate they are going to suffer an almighty hammering was shot against the bar Not sure that Bravo got any kind of touch on that the bar unfortunate the final score in Quito Ecuador 3 Chile 0 Uh, Cecilia, we move on on the show, uh, and this is where we tell you that you're part of everything that we're doing. Your your key, your integral to everything that you're doing. We want to keep the conversation going. We want you to give us your opinion on issues raised on this program through the following mechanisms. You can send us a mail, sports this morning at channelstv.com is where you send it to. On Facebook, uh, you can go to channels have on sport. Give us your thoughts, your opinion. You know, talk to us about things you want us to be talking about. And of course, on Twitter, we brag about this and we keep on saying it. It's a verified handle. It is at channels underscore sports. Let's keep the conversation going. Even when the show ends, you can keep talking to us. Okay, we'll move on. That, we, we've said a lot today. Um, we've talked about... We've talked about... Um, we've talked about football. We've talked about uh, Formula One, tennis. Uh, where do we go from here, Cecilia? Yeah, we were talking about Flamigo. He returned to the country yesterday. No for fair as, as expected because of their performance and all that. We'll be talking to the coach this morning. He will be telling us what the experience was like because when he was talking to FIFA.com, he talked about the experience, what they've gained there, and the fact that sometimes you just come into a tournament is not just for you because somehow everything will just go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing actually happened there. I mean, they couldn't win a match and they couldn't score a goal, but at least they got a point. And against England, they ended goalless, and they're back in the country. No fun fair, as I said earlier. But the coach will definitely be telling us the experience of the girls, what they went through, and everything that went down in Jordan. It's, it's, hard, to, um, it's hard to pick any positives, to be honest. Um, our players are talented. I mean, that, that, that has never been in doubt. But how do we raise... And it's not just a problem with the age grade, even the senior national team. How do we raise our level? How do we get to a point where we beat all of these teams uh, with ease? Uh, you, you look at England, you know, England, very good customers back in the day. Now, I mean, we struggle to beat them. Uh, and what is the reason? They seem to be doing something. They are building from the grassroots. And now all we do is qualify for tournaments, go and play. And yeah, there's nothing, great. no... Uh, <laughs> No strong league, strong league that, you know, no age grade competitions. I mean, all of this is, it, it just really shows. no foundation anymore. This might sound harsh, okay. especially in the time of recession, but um, we're, we're not serious about growing the game. We're not at all. Uh, Coach Balani Kiyus will be talking to us from Abuja this morning. Coach, good morning. Welcome to the program. Good morning. What was the experience like in Jordan for you and the girls? Well, we thank God it was okay. I mean, generally, what went down in Jordan, everything that happened, you know, 
the games from the opening game against Brazil that you said the girls were actually afraid of the name Brazil. The second one against England, you actually commended their performance. And the third one, you said, well, it happens, it happens. Most of the teams will be leaving on Monday. Just tell us about the general experience of the girls over there in Jordan. Well, uh, as you all know, uh, uh, as far as football is concerned, we, I think to me it is always uh, good to keep discovering uh, talent. All these players that traveled, we had out of the whole 21 players, we have only three that traveled to Costa Rica in 2014. All the rest are new players. And uh, of course, you know too well that as a new person in the system, you definitely face some, uh, you must have to face pay for some challenges before you now become what you are. So at least we've gone there and uh, a lot of them who are new were like, uh, you can't imagine in their test being in such places uh, for the first time. And uh, at the end of the day, we lost out. But I think if, we, if, they, if they have an opportunity again, it won't be the same because they have gone out, they have seen what it is, and they have known that us. Uh, it is not even proper to make mistakes because if you make mistakes, you are going back home. Okay, coach, you, you're talking as if it's not age grade tournament. I mean, this is on the 17th. We know that most times, some of the girls, if they are up to 17 when they went for the tournament, they can't go for the next one. What experience were you talk, are you talking about? Because we had just three players who went to the next one, and some Nigerians were even complaining how old were they when they went for the first tournament. It's more like, will you subject to actually recycling, I mean, bringing the same players? went for a tournament and repeating all the players again in the next tournament. Is that what you're trying to say? There's nobody that will ever complain that our players were the old, play, old players. We have some people, some officials that travel with us. Even at the match venue, they were complaining that our guests were too, too small. So there's, no, no, there's nothing like being old or whatever. I don't know how people saw it on the screen, but I know too well that people that travel with us complain physically that our guests were small. Okay, what you're saying is some of these girls are not up to 17, so they can actually be able to go for the next tournament, so that because of this experience, when they go for the next one, they should be able to do perform better. Is that what you're saying? I, I said so. I said so based on the fact that if at the, at the end of the day, any of any of them that they see with you, I do not say all the things. Okay. I said any of them that they see with you, and if any one of them that is over that can go to 20, will definitely not go as a as a starter again. You can go as somebody as who has tested it. Okay, all right, all right. I think that's, that's really cool. Now, when you arrived yesterday, what was the reception like at the airport? Sorry? When you guys arrived yesterday, what was the, rest, the reception like at the airport? Have you met with Nigerian Football Federation officials? They came to pick us from the Federation. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, that's better. Uh, uh, okay, Coach, let me just uh, throw this in quickly. Um, what next? Uh, usually when um, a, a team comes to the end of like, like, what, what next? Uh, are you leaving the team or is there any plan that you're going to still, I mean, just, just let, let us in on what's next for you. Okay, um, I, think, um, I think we lost him there. Uh, we'll, we'll try to get him back um, on the line and yeah. uh, continue that uh, uh, conversation. I, was, I, I mean, I really wanted to know what next? Because usually when a tournament ends, everything ends. Everything and ends. It, it shouldn't be like that. You know, we, we shouldn't create vacuums. Uh, we shouldn't create a vacuum that will make us start chasing things from the beginning. Uh, you know, having some sort of, of, of stability. But, but we'll, we'll do our best to, yeah. to, to get them back on the line and continue uh, with, with, with yeah, our you know, discussion. As you rightly said, it says most of the guys were actually young. So the thing is they can really lift them, put them together, train them more. I mean, if the ones that cannot go for the next tournament, they can actually, you know, make up the under 20 and all that. So when you now have a, a book of players to pull from, it's easy. We talked about the fact that on the 20 level, the performance of the girls at the, other, uh, at the World Cup in Canada yeah. actually helped, you know, the Super Falcons, you know, when they won the African Senior Championship. So it shows that when you have that progression, it actually helped the senior team. But when you don't have the foundation at all, the foundation is a bit rusty right yeah. now because of the league, the issues and everything. So picking girls is always difficult. Mm -hmm. So how many of these coaches are, can actually afford to go around the country to pick girls from the school? They may not even have the resources to do that, except, yeah. you know, you have someone who can actually, you know, bankroll that. Because yeah. it's not going to be easy 
for the federation and also for the coaches to go around the countries, start maybe going to schools even, you know, watch the girls when they play football, see the ones that are really good enough and everything, and pick some of these girls along the way. And before you know it, you have a team, you can, a pool of players you can actually uh, take from any time you're going yeah, through. Yeah, a, a, a lot of the things that you've said, very good, very good suggestion, but you know, we happen to be in a time where, when you see all of these things, the word recession makes you keep your mouth shut. Uh, and, and it's really sad. You know, you, you, you said something I, I, I quite uh, do not agree with. And that's the difference between Africans and Europeans. You can win without developing. And that's why we keep on winning the other 17 and do not develop. Countries like England and Spain, when a particular set of player, players play the age grade, you, you rarely see them back wholesale, maybe one or two. Sure. And that's why they keep developing. And look, I, I'm scared if we, we keep seeing the same faces over and over and over. And you can't blame the coaches, like you said. I mean, that's why... We know the solution, but when you say it, when you say it, the problem, the financial constraints will be the excuse that are we really serious about developing the game? Because it seems to me that we are quite comfortable qualifying for tournaments and playing in those tournaments. I mean, check out our girls, apart from the few lucky ones who have used international competitions yeah. like this to get a club. Just try and look at what they do. Most of the time, they are not active uh, in a league where you have a lot of walkovers. I mean... Some teams don't play their players. They don't have feeders team. I mean, a, a lot is wrong with the system itself. So we should not yeah, sit down here like and blame the, the flamingos. And the, look, we need to fix our problems. If we are not winning, England is not winning under 17. They are not winning under 20. But well, the, yeah, the, the rate at which they are producing young players mm -hmm. will, will check, make you... Check their performance in Canada last yes. World Cup. I mean, it tells you that, hey, these girls are really ready. Or rather, the FA is doing something really right. We are surprised to see England getting out from the group stage, getting to quarterfinals, and even semifinals, I was like, this is England. I mean, this could have been Nigeria, but somehow it just didn't work out for the Super Falcons. But you have two major tournaments this year. The under-20 again, and of course, you have the senior women's national team. So that's the also another competition they will be going for. At the Super Eagles, we know they're playing Algeria on the 12th. It's just one day. But you can actually have time for these girls and see how you can still, no matter what, just a little bit, whatever it yeah. from. From the girls, mm -hmm. I mean, from the guys, I mean, you can actually give it to the, to the girls, you know, because what is going around now is really something that is not pretty and is not funny.